Well, this year, millions of people followed the royal wedding, myself included. Some would even say they had a case of royal fever. Joining me now is you, by professor and royals expert, Seal Otnes. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Of course. So, first of all, tell us how we're sitting, because I'm very interested to know if this is the proper way. This is the Duchess Slant. Duchess Slant. And Meghan Markle has received quite a bit of negative feedback for crossing her legs. Oh, goodness. This is just a great example of the... Um, Demands that one has when one joins the pin the family at the highest pinnacle of the social ladder in uh, the world. So, one, you know. first of all, tell me how you got so interested in the royal family because you have a great knowledge of like the past decades. I mean, we have like historical cups here, so kind of get me interested in how you started. So, I am a scholar of rituals. I mm -hmm. study rituals, so uh, crazy events that we throw a lot of money at that we really don't understand why we do it, and then they're over pretty quickly. Right. So, uh, within our own lives, you know, we can think about weddings, Christmas, holidays, where we just kind of go a little berserk on the spending. Um, the royals are probably one of the best examples of people who stage cultural rituals. So as I got interested in rituals, it just was sort of a natural progression after studying weddings to think about Charles and Diana's wedding, which led us to the royal family as a topic. So uh, it's been a great uh, sort of landscape to study ritualistic behavior, consumption and culture, wacky commercialism, all sorts of... Uh, factors like that. Sure, and we were kind of talking earlier about how you're going to be involved in a national special, so this is very, very exciting. Talk to me about that. When does it air and everything? So, uh, the documentary, uh, The Story of the Royals, airs uh, August 21st and 22nd, and um, I was asked to be uh, one of the uh, people to, to speak about, you know, why the royals are so influential. That's basically the topic on our lives. Why, for example, when Kate Middleton brings out a baby blanket with her newborn, it sells out in you know, an hour and a half and crashes the website. Right. So all that stuff is really interesting to me, especially because I am a professor of marketing at the sure. U of I, uh, to think about consumer culture and consumer behavior and people just reacting so quickly in a viral social media environment. And why do you think that is? Because even myself, I was very engaged with the royal wedding. I was constantly seeing what they were wearing, what they were doing. So what do you think that is in all of your research? Why do we, you know, become obsessed with these phenomena like this? Well, I think uh, the, the, the simple answer is it's fun. Yeah. Right. We had a party. I had a party. I had. I made sure my cupcakes were the same flavor as the actual <laughs> wedding cake. I couldn't let this pass by because I think I wouldn't have heard the end of it. Right. But um, it. Part of it is the fun. The other part of it is if a royal uh, member chooses to uh, use a certain blanket, when that person can buy anything in the world at any price point, right. you can't get really a higher testimonial for quality than that. And yeah. Kate Middleton is very interesting in that regard because she's often done a lot of what we call they call high street fashion, off the rack type things that people yeah. can afford. Um, and so she's made the brand more accessible in that way. I love that. And talk about these cups because I think these are fascinating. My favorite's in the middle. So, um, the, I just brought these in as examples of very simple kind of example of a category of commemoratives that people uh, tend to enjoy that they make for almost every occasion. Um, these are just a range of some of the ones I have. So this one on the uh, right here is actually uh, from the Prince of Wales' uh, investiture um, when he was in, in, the, in the 1960s, when he was a young man. What I love about this one is that it demonstrates kind of the 60s style yeah, definitely. and the color. But on the other hand, then we have the very traditional sort of wedge wood uh, mug. This is for the queen. And then from her 50th anniversary, they began getting a little uh, funkier with the commemoratives. We have like a little more of a, of a modern aesthetic. So we sure. have um, a whole line of people who now are doing uh, these kinds of um, more uh, sort of fashionable uh, contemporary designs. So that's just, you could spend a book on commemorative mugs alone and people have. And you know <laughs> what, on a final note, you have a book Yes. So if you have a case of the royal fever, you need yes. to grab the royal fever. Yes. Well, that'd be great. Yeah. Yes. Well, where can people get it, and what is it kind of about? Obviously, it's the royal family. Well, uh, this book, we decided uh, I, after I stood in a, a souvenir shop in um, Britain and thought, why why would I want to buy this mug? Oh, this is a great topic for research. You know, what is the deal with uh, the royal family and consumer behavior? Mm -hmm. This book traces uh, films, uh, touristic activities, souvenirs, uh, how the royals kind of can endorse products without actually endorsing them, all that kind of stuff. And um, you can get it in any bookstore, Amazon.com, um, all sorts of uh, outlets like that and uh, I hope that people enjoy it. If well, you read it. you've definitely got my seal of approval. Oh, thank you very much. I You're appreciate welcome. that. Absolutely. Well, cheers to you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back with more of the morning show.